Hey, Elise Pickett here with The Urban Harvest, and today I am going to be talking to you about why I start my seedlings outdoors. I get a lot of questions from my clients and in my classes asking how I choose or where I choose to start my vegetable seedlings and my plants. Do I use grow lights? Do I grow indoors, outdoors? And the answer is my personal preference is to keep things simple. I grow outdoors. I use no grow lights. And clearly I use uh, pretty upcycled materials. I think that keeping things basic is part of being sustainable with our, our gardening and our vegetable gardening because it allows it to be cost effective. So when we spend a ton of time and energy and money on creating a very controlled environment, you will probably have slightly higher results, but at what cost? I'm gonna go over a few of the different things and factors that you need to consider when you're deciding what is best for you in your garden, uh, whether you grow indoors or outdoors, and show you a little bit about my setup that I have and use. So I salvaged this uh, fresh market rack, I don't even know what you call it, produce stand rack um, from a co-op. They were going to be getting rid of it and upgrading it and I uh, snagged it for my seed starting. And I always like to encourage people, whether it's seed starting or whether it's creating shade in your garden or whatever else it is, if you have something that's available and free, at least give it a try for the purpose you're thinking of see how it does, you might as well try to make things as sustainable and recycled as possible. If it doesn't end up working, you can always buy the fancy new gadget or the brand new thing after the fact, but you might as well give it a try. This stand has done well for me. I've had it probably nine months, maybe a year. Um, right after we moved into the house, we got it. It's got nice shelves, nice deep wide shelves, so all of the plants get plenty of light and it's been working great for me and it costs nothing. One of the first things to consider when you're growing outside rather than indoors is light. So we can control the light, but obviously we're not gonna be controlling the temperature. Uh, so finding them nice morning sun, a spot in your yard that has nice morning sun rather than afternoon sun is really, really important for growing your seedlings outdoors. So this part of my garden is shaded um, from the afternoon sun by the shed behind it. So it gets nice morning filtered sun from the oak trees so that they have plenty of light to grow upright, not get leggy, and they don't get too hot in the afternoon sun. One of the first questions I always get when I say that I grow outdoors is, what do you do about the pests? And because I typically use an integrative pest management approach, uh, I do have an entire full length class that I taught on that that's available on YouTube. If you're interested in learning more about my pest management approach, make sure to check the link above and that will take you to that full one hour class. But um, because of that approach and because I choose to take the least invasive uh, measures and allow nature to kind of do its thing and balance itself out, I do have losses. I don't manage the pests much. Um, if I see a caterpillar on a seedling that I'm about to transplant, of course, I'll hand pick it off, toss it to the chickens, that kind of thing. But um, I will sustain higher losses than if I were to have grown indoors. This um, loofah gourd here that I have started, I came out just uh, this afternoon and something got it, whether it was a squirrel running across, uh, whether it was um, a cutworm, who knows? I lost a loofah gourd, uh, but I still have six more. And that's kind of part of the, the benefit of growing from seed is that it's not a huge cost, it's, uh, cost investment per plant. You know, this is from my own saved seed, so it's literally free. But even if you were to have purchased a package of seeds, you know, one, one loofah seed should only be a penny equivalent maybe, or a little bit more. Um, you should be having plenty of seed to make it cost effective so that if you do sustain some losses from your um, pests in the area by growing outdoors, it's not gonna be the end of the world. 
Uh, and I do always make sure to overplant a little bit. If I need three plants or four plants, I might plant five or six, maybe even seven, depending on how much I really want all of those plants, just in case something happens. And if you get all of them to survive, share them with a plant friend or plant some more. Just like I mentioned it being worthwhile planting a couple extra plants in pots than you actually need. If you need four, you plant six type of thing. It's also a good idea when growing outdoors to not just put one seed per spot, but to potentially put two or even three seeds in each shell. That just ensures that you get the germination that you want and that you're gonna get the number of plants in the end that you actually want to plant. And this is not just a good idea for uh, starting seedlings in trays, but also in the garden. Another factor to consider in addition to the light is the temperature. So one of the advantages of starting in trays versus in the garden itself is getting a jump on the seasons. When you do grow outdoors, that can be a little trickier. You can uh, shelter them, provide a little bit of extra warmth, or potentially shade them if you're on the back end of the season. But if you have a very sensitive crop and you're growing outdoors without any sort of protection, you wouldn't be able to get a jump on the season as you were if you were growing in an indoors or enclosed environment. Lettuce, for example, is a fairly sensitive crop. It doesn't like it too cold. It doesn't like it too hot. Um, so these are in prime season. I can easily start them outdoors. They have zero issues with it. They've germinated great. I had a pest problem here, you can see, but overall they're doing great. If it were in our cold snap middle of the winter, I would probably protect them or potentially move them onto a patio or something where there's just a little bit more protection to give them that warmth that they would need to germinate. Likewise, in the late summer, when I'm trying to germinate some of my hot weather lettuces like Jericho or Calura or anything like that, they can germinate in soils above 80 degrees but they're gonna need a little bit of extra help. I would definitely make sure to have them in a shady location that has good airflow for growing outdoors to give them those slightly cooler temperatures than if they were out in direct sunlight in late season. So that's just something to consider. Um, and that is maybe a downfall to growing outdoors, but I'm not taking up space in the house. And like I said, it's free. One of the last things to consider when growing outdoors is watering. So the one thing that you do need to make sure you're accounting for and paying attention to is some sort of shelter or protection, even if it's not foolproof from heavy driving rains. So uh, my seed starting rack not only has a very flimsy uh, fabric cover, just enough to kind of break up the rain and repel it a bit, but it also is underneath the eave of our shed. So if we do get those hard driving rains, it's not gonna disturb the soil that much. We will get blow, uh, blow in rain from the side and everything like that. And we're not trying to completely control or eliminate the rain from getting to it. We just don't want it to be directly on the plants and the soil. So um, some sort of overhead protection uh, from rain. And also remembering that because it is outdoors, um, it's going to be in our ambient temperatures, not that perfect climate cooled, um, perfect sunlight environments. Um, you will need to probably pay a little bit more attention to water. Uh, so making sure that none of your trays have catchment because you don't want them sitting in water, right? If we do get rain or anything like that. But also um, checking them a little bit more frequently, especially now that we're heading into spring season, that kind of thing. Um, when you're in your drier season, when it's warm out, you're gonna need to water a little bit more frequently than if they were in your 70 something degree AC cooled house. Starting vegetables from seed doesn't have to be as complex and expensive as we may think it needs to be. Seedlings are incredibly resilient and stronger than we would ever anticipate. So growing outdoors although it does have some caveats, is really not as difficult as it may seem. These tomato seedlings here don't seem to mind it at all. 
Uh, the one thing you do want to make sure you do with all seedlings, not ones grown outdoors, but indoors as well, is to make sure to adjust your plants to their ultimate destination slowly over time. And that just gives them time to acclimate to the ambient temperatures and the sunlight. You may think that because you're growing outdoors, you don't need to give them that transition time, but because they're gonna be going from a semi-sheltered location from sun to a garden that probably has considerably more sun, it is still a good idea to do that transition. If you want to learn more about how to go about that process, I do have a video, so go ahead and check out the link above and that will give you a little bit more detail on that. I hope this was helpful for you and that you have a better understanding of what growing outdoors entails. And if you like this or other videos that I've done, make sure to hit the subscribe button with the little bell next to it so you're alerted every time a new video comes out on Florida-based vegetable gardening. Have a great day.